But if anything happens in between that, you get sick. Your kid gets sick. Bet you're looking and going on social media telling people to please pray for me. Please pray for my kid. How quick an atheist will turn around. But then you got some atheists that are hard in hearts and they're going to say, God killed my kid. And God killed my kid. Not his own beliefs might not put the protection, but not only that, if my kid dies and I know my kid believes in God and he sees me structured around God, he's going to start believing in God himself, okay? So he's going to be in safe hands. When you go to heaven, you're going to see your son. And you have no reason to hate somebody that protected your child. You don't know what reason and why things happen. Some things are genetical cur curses too. Some families are a lifetime of genetical curses, meaning they practice witchcraft all through their life and worship idols all through their life and it is passed through genetics. Like, okay, like David, uh, Daniel and, and the uh, lion's den. Okay, remember when they tricked uh, the king into putting Daniel in the lion's den, right? Well, hey, life fire, I need to talk to you hey, uh, in a minute. When they put Daniel in the lion's den, what did they do to his accusers? Once Daniel was in the lion's den, they woke up the next day, right, to go let him out, and he was still alive. None of the lions touched touched him, right? Touched Daniel, right? He came right out, right? What happened to his accusers and his accusers' family and kids? What happened to all of them? They were all thrown in the lion's den and all died by the lions, okay? Genetical things go down to innocent children too. When they make sacrifices, they're sacrificing their bloodline. And you can't do that. And when you do that, you curse your own bloodline. The only way you can break that curse is by going to God and totally submitting to God and redirecting that thing. But if you don't do that, then you're still living that bloodline. And a lot of times... With that bloodline, they don't want to go near people in churches. If you say you're Christian, they'll they'll hate you. They'll they'll pick on you for being a Christian. And everything about a Christian bothers them. If they go by a church, they'll get all jumpy and all pissed. What do you think that's festering from? That's not from God. That's from a demon. You know what I'm saying? Now, if they went into that church and they actually prayed and repented that demon has no control over that body no more so you can break the curse do they break that curse a lot of them don't a lot of them don't but not all but a lot of them don't they stay in that curse they don't know how to get out but they don't want to get out either because they don't want to learn anything about it. It's a hardened heart. Like God said, your hearts will be hardened. That's a hardened heart. Like the Pharaoh, the Pharisee, that uh, the Pharaoh, his heart was so hardened, even the loss of his kid, and he still, his heart was still hardened. You know, that's nuts. Like you have all these plagues, fish dying. I mean, locusts. I mean. All this crazy stuff happening. Water turning into, like, blood. Uh, like, countless uh, stuff. Why didn't he relent? He did not relent. Even up until his firstborn son's death. And even after he said, Get these people out of here. Go. He still sent people out to send after them. Because he was like, No, I want him back. No, no, no. I want him back. His heart was still hardened again. And what happened to his people? Crushed in the water. Dead. 